Hey VC, it's Mazzy here, and it's contest time. I've only done one contest early on when I had just a handful of uh, subscribers. Maybe it was my first hundred, I don't remember exactly. But it was about photography, photographers, album covers. And uh, I surpassed 500, I'm, in, I'm about 550 right now. So I'm between 500 and 600. So this is my... Um, 500 600 club contest and the usual the, the usual <laughs> the usual uh, rules and regulations apply you need to be a subscriber uh, the contest will go to the end of august to so the end of the month and then um, once i get back after uh, the labor day holiday weekend i'll pull the um i'll pull the uh winners i'll announce the winners in a major drawing with Ed McMahon in the house. Not really. Um, so, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna read the questions. The questions are list, list, listed below. Um, before that, a little business. Soundtrack music in the background. The Bohunks, I only have these on CD, but I love the Bohunks. Uh, they do, this is uh, Leroy Shield music from Laurel and Hardy. Lee, uh, Roy Shield did a lot of soundtracks um, at the time. I mean, he did a lot of soundtracks for the Hal Roach comedies. And the Bohunks has done a series of these. So this is double CDs, old-fashioned music from that. I also have uh, them doing uh, a couple CDs of Little Rascals, the Hal Roach Little Rascal films, and one of uh, them doing Raymond Scott. Uh, even if you don't know Raymond Scott's name, he's done some electronic stuff, but you knew a lot of uh, the music. Ren and Stimpy used his music. So um, sometimes they're kind of very cartoony, that uh, 30s uh, type music, 30s, 40s things that just kind of fun in the background. So, you know, uh, Hal Roach chase sequences. You know that stuff. Uh, lifting the pianos up the stairs, Laurel and Hardy. If you don't know him, you need to watch, you need to get an education in uh, American cinema, early American cinema. So, you all wanna know what the prizes are gonna be. I'm gonna pick the prizes, but there'll be three prizes. First prize will be a box set of my choice to give you, but you can choose the genre, rock, jazz, country, Within reason, if you start saying Bavarian cheese orchestra or something, you know, there's not a lot of choices there. So, uh, you know, it won't be that one of the massive, you know, 30 uh, uh, CD collections, but I'll pick something tasteful. So if you say rock, if you say prog, we'll figure it out. If you already have it, well, then you can donate it to um, the less fortunate on the um, in the world here. Okay, so... Second prize, a CD box set of your choice. I, you saw those uh, box set CDs? Not of your choice, I'm sorry. You choose the genre, I pick the box set and I'll ship it to you. And then the third prize is one LP from 1969, which I'll choose. Or maybe I'll give you a, 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 a again, pick the genre, probably rock, maybe. But I'll uh, send you that LP. Now, Again, this context is celebrating 500 to 600 subscribers and also celebrating 50 years of the anniversary of 1969. Woodstock, you know, the tumultuous year with um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Movie I really liked. Uh, not for everyone, but really, really kind of cool. I've seen it twice now. So there was um, great music in that movie as well. But anyway, here we go. So, the first question is one album. Okay, I need my, my cheat sheets here. Ooh, I like that fill in light. You know, photographers, they do a fill in light source because the lighting here is bouncing off the walls. So I get my laptop Mac Air book light. Anyway, show one album that you think everyone should own. One album that you feel that everyone should own. Hey, it's my contest. I'm going to pick two. Fairport Convention. 
Lees and Leaf, probably the album that invented British folk rock. Um, just a wonderful record. Uh, I, this is one of those records I've paid, played so many times um, over the years and uh, on Island Records. And it's uh, with Sandy Denny, Ashley Hutchings, Dave Maddox, Simon Nicole, Dave Stubrick, uh, Swarbick, excuse me, and Richard Thompson. Um, but it's to me a perfect folk rock album. The best of British folk rock. Um, Sandy Denny's vocals, the guitar playing, Richard Thompson. Um, just a fabulous record. Everyone should own this. Everyone needs this in their collection. And if you don't like folk rock music, what can I say? I was gonna say something snarky, but I'm picking two anyway. The other one and more in the folk realm, but it's a gorgeous, beautiful record. I mentioned it several times on the VC. I did a whole feature on this artist. Phil Oaks, Pleasures of the Harbor. Gorgeous voice, contemporary of Bob Dylan, uh, but had the pretty boy voice, hung himself at a young age in his 30s, I believe. But uh, this has beautiful orchestration and piano playing. Um, and it's just an, an amazing record. Lincoln Mayorga is the piano player on this. I toured with him at the time. But these two records, I think everyone should own. Anyone who just gives a shit about music should own these records. Anyway, it's all opinion, right? You're going to show me things, and we'll see. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter, but that's the... That's the question number one. That's um, question number two. Show me a record. Show us a record that puts you in the mood or a record that you want to play to put someone else in the mood. In the mood for what, you ask? It's up to you. So I'm going to Chet Baker Sings. Now, this is a reissue. Be, this is actually a really good reissue, but beware. This is Pan Am Records. There's a lot of these fly-by-night uh, import gray market record things. Anything that says um, wax, something wax, or um, duo, or whatever it's called. This even might be it, but I tell you, this record sounds fabulous. Uh, Chet Baker Sings. It certainly puts me in the mood uh, three nights a week. Okay, so, moving right along. Show us an album you own with beautiful cover art and packaging. A record you own that has amazing, wonderful packaging and artwork. I'm gonna pick an album that originally came out um, in the 70s only as a Japanese import at Santana Lotus, a live album recorded in Japan um, on, and only released in Japan. It never came out here until, I think Sony finally did a, Columbia probably did an American release, I'm not sure. And I actually, I have a CD copy of this that Carlos Santana autographed during a photo shoot I was at. But let me show you, it's actually a wonderful record. And you gotta be careful with it, because this is from 1970 something. How can I show this and make it? Okay, this is going to be hard, so. <laughs> I need a camera person. It's like Japanese origami. But there's so many parts and pieces to this. It's stupendous. There's more. You need to kind of lay this out on your floor or mount it. It's almost like a Japanese kimono of artwork. My original copy I got when I managed a record store and it folds out. And there's all kinds of, look at this label. 
Anyway, um, Santana Lotus is one of my uh, picks. I mean, you know, you see me show box sets and other things, but I would say that's my answer. So what's yours? What's your f favorite or one of your favorite albums with great artwork and packaging? Okay, next is question number four. Showcase an artist whose entire catalog you own or working on owning. So basically, t show us an artist or tell us an artist. You don't have to go in detail of every single record, but um, showcase an artist that you want to get their entire catalog or you already own their entire catalog. It could be a catalog of three albums. Let's just say it has to be three or more because if, if you know, there are a lot of artists that are new that have one catalog, it's not fair. Even two. Two could be an accident, right? But three or more, and um, you, can't have, you can't show Billy Joel or Genesis. Actually, I'm kidding. You can show whoever you want. Um, in my case, you know, I'm just, for example, the Beatles. I'm not pulling it out there, but these are all Beatles and Beatles-related albums. I'm obsessed, but you already knew that. Okay, the next question Number five, show an artist who released their first album in 1969. An artist who showed, who released their first album in 1969. There are a bunch of them, but show one that you own. I'm going to say the Flying Burrito Brothers, the Gilded Palace of Sin, Graham Parsons, Chris Etheridge, Sneaky Pete, uh, Chris Hillman from The Birds, Birds Offshoot, Country Rock, an album that is an amazing record. I mean, this is one of those other records I would suggest that everyone gets if they like Country Rock. This is um, after Sweetheart of the Rodeo. This is one of the uh, early great Country Rock records. Came out in 1969, Sweetheart of the Rodeo. I'm sorry, The Gilded Palace of Sin. And they're wearing nudie suits on the cover. And we've spoken about this. And if you haven't watched... Those suits they're wearing, you've seen those in a lot of country artists, cowboy artists, Porter Wagner, um, on and on, Graham Parsons, obviously. A guy named Nudie out of L.A. designs and makes these suits, and it's called the Nudie suit, N-U-D-I-E. It's like out by Joshua Tree, this album cover was photographed. But anyway, first album, their debut album, 1969. And the final question, show us your favorite album of 1969. I have a lot, but just for the sake of, of you know, honesty, light, you know, I got to say Abbey Road. It seems like the obvious choice this year. And by the way, they just announced the 50th box set, extra bonus, doodah, deluxe, remixed, kumbaya, edition of Abbey Road coming out uh, towards the end of September. Giles Martin working on that, remastering, remixing. Uh, but Abbey Road, what can I say about Abbey Road? Uh, EMI Studios is right there. EMI Studios was called EMI Studios. They changed the name of Abbey Road Studios years later. And when if you go across the famous crosswalk there in St. John Woods, uh, area of London. You can walk down there and on the uh, from a cement thing, everyone graffiti it, graffitis it all the time and people, uh, they paint it up every month, they repaint it or so and the people do it again, but it's part of the, it's part of the scene now. But Abbey Road 1969, what's your favorite album from 1969? And of course, because this is what we do in the VC, there's a bonus question. The bonus question is, Name Mazzy, that's me, Mazzy. Name Mazzy's three favorite bands and show one album from each of them. If you are if you watch my channel, you know the answer. It's an easy answer. So name those three. This is a bonus question. I don't know what the bonus is going to get you, but hey, everyone adds a bonus question. So name three favorite bands and show one album from each artist. And wear a hat while you're answering this question and showing those albums, okay? Any kind of hat, it doesn't be fedora, pork pie, baseball hat, bandera, 
uh, driving cap, Spanish bullfighting hat, anything, any kind of hat. So uh, that's it. That's Mazzy's contest. Everything's listed below. And uh, you have till the end of August. So it's what, three weeks or so uh, to do this. Come on, improvise. It, should, it shouldn't take you long. Think about it. Do it. Uh, I'm not answering any questions. If you don't understand the assignment, uh, you know, email one of your neighbors and uh, that person will give the assignment. You know, if you have too much homework, get your act together. Pace yourself. Anyway, thanks for being, seriously, thanks for being um, uh, a subscriber and thanks for watching these videos. Uh, the response has been wonderful and it's fun doing them. I love improvising and I love showing um, my record collection to you all and even my CD collection. But Mazzy loves you and uh, hope to, um, looking forward to uh, seeing some of the responses. Take care. Bye.